What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through today's Monday MLB slate. Hope everyone had a good weekend. Um, I didn't play this weekend, so it was actually not too bad because I have been getting, it's been one of the worst months I've had in terms of like ROI, probably I, that I can remember. I cannot seem to get, get the right mix of anything together. So I am ready to turn it around. Sheets We're ready. Weekend. Uh, it was pretty good. We are, we are, I, I went to see a concert last night. I posted some of it on on Twitter, uh, I saw Sticks and Oreo Speedwagon back from my old uh, my old days, um, and they actually did a really nice job. Uh, you know, it's kind of it's always it's always a struggle to see all the people that you know, you you, uh, you listen to when you were younger, and now, now they're all like seventy. You know, it's it's rough. Yeah. But uh, but they actually did they actually did a really nice job. What they do is they kind of filter in kind of like younger musicians along the way, you know, to keep the sound up a little bit. So uh, it's uh, it, it was actually actually really really enjoyable and you know I get to spend time with my wife outside it was just a lot of fun. That's cool. That's cool, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's nice to be able to go to concerts again and also to yep. concerts that you didn't even know the bands were still playing. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's jump let's jump into this slate. I think it's another yes. interesting one. It seems like these days we have a lot of uh, interesting pitching options on every slate, and it's it's I'm curious to see where the ownership ends up today because I think there's a lot of ways to go. And you also have a little bit of weather concerns, although from what I hear in your area, it's not going to be bad by the time the game starts, but there might be some rain in the afternoon. But there are a couple of games that are a little bit concerning. The Philadelphia game and um, the Atlanta game are, are probably the tops on the list. With that said, uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, Philadelphia, Cincinnati, I think that this is an option. Um, it's certainly not my favorite option uh, pitching wise with uh with Syndergaard and then you've got a, basically a bullpen game against Philly so I think Philly is completely obviously viable um Syndergaard is is fine I, I don't think I'll do it um and I think that I think I think that Philadelphia is, is a is pretty obviously going to be a, a pretty popular stack and it's a bad bullpen game and uh yeah I think why not Philadelphia so they are definitely one of the teams on my list yeah first of all from a pitching perspective it's um not the greatest, uh, not the greatest pitching slate as far as uh, raw points and upside goes, and some of it is kind of weather dependent, also. Um, so you're going to get guys like Syndergaard show up as kind of a you know point per dollar type play. I, I listen. I we we talk about this about when we you you brought up your your kind of downswing recently. We started to talk about you know how to kind of analyze yourself to see you know what you could be doing wrong, what you could be doing right, and all this stuff. I always feel that when when I not when I'm struggling, but whenever when I'm attacking slates, I feel as though I take pitchers without ceilings a little bit too often. Like mm -hmm. like I, I take pitchers that have good kind of like point per dollar projections and don't you know and don't go for upside as much as I should. Like I'll take Syndergaard as an example. Like if you had him with a little bit better point per dollar play than let's say a Adam. Like a, like a Josiah Gray or something like that, you know, or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, that that I get, sometimes get get you know lured into this idea of just well, I'll just take the better point per dollar play, and they'll sometimes get there, but they'll never win anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to in myself just kind of try to avoid that as much as possible. So guys like Syndergaard, yeah, there there are slates for him. You know what I mean? Um, and maybe there's one of them, but but just overall, I think it's just kind of good policy that when anything's close between two guys in GPPs, you do want to go for the higher variance, you know, higher upside type of guys. So for me, look, Syndergaard's got a great matchup, um, and he does, you know, reject a decent point per dollar, but I'm going to try to avoid him today. Um, yeah. with, 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 with the stacks, um, I have basically six stacks that I'm kind of interested in, and Philly is certainly one of them. Um, uh, I don't have them as highly projected as far as ownership goes as maybe you do. I don't. I have them. Um, have them up. I mean, I have them was a st stack people are going to play, but not like the top one. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna I'm gonna consider them in play. But I mean, I'm looking at their their their. their I mean, their team total is one of one. You know, there are three guys or three teams that are with a team total over five. So obviously they're going to be or six of them. So obviously they're going to be played. Um, and against uh, what could be a bullpen game, I guess they I guess they have to be popular. But listen, listen they are in play, and I do like them, so there are going to be kind of in the mix. So for me, I'm going to avoid the pitching, and Philly's certainly going to be on my list of stacks to go after. 
Yep. I think it's uh, basically exactly where I am. And I agree with what your point is about the pitchers with upside. Um, what's weird is I actually think that there are pitchers with, uh, I, I don't necessarily think that on the slate that they're, it's not necessarily the most beautiful options, but I think there are guys who can put up a big number that are, that I, that I like better than Syndergaard basically in a similar price range anyway. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, Pittsburgh in Atlanta. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of struggling with this. So I actually, I actually like the idea of, well, okay. I don't, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not playing Contreras for anything like that, but I don't think that he's as bad as maybe people think he is. And it's also a big stadium downgrade for Atlanta. I think Atlanta is going to be a really popular stack today. And I personally think that there are other ones that I would prefer. I, I, I mean, like you have Grissom at 2,100. That's, very reasonable uh darno's cheap at 3k i just think that they're going to be really popular and i'm trying to avoid them based on that that account uh could they get to him and i i don't think Contreras is like the, some superstar but i think that he's a little better than he gets credit for it's only 73 degrees the braves have been playing in like 90 degree weather in their home park which is a much better hitters park than pittsburgh is so i'm not quite as high on the braves maybe as the field is going to be today it does make me nervous because they're always capable of exploding for 15 runs um and and at, at the same time, I actually like the Pittsburgh uh, stack a little bit. Uh, I don't think I, you know. And again, if you're gonna if you're gonna talk about different possibilities, I don't think you'd be it'd be horrible to play Odorizzi here. But I, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I do like Pittsburgh as a, as a stack, and it's weird to say I prefer Pittsburgh over Atlanta in this game, but I do like Pittsburgh a little bit as a stack. Yeah, um, I that this the one I was getting at before is that I I have Atlanta as. Um, as as the most popular stack by a pretty decent amount, and I don't really have them rated that much higher than anybody else. Um, right. So if this is the case that that Atlanta is going to be really popular, I'm probably going to end up baiting that. Um, and like you said, Pittsburgh is not the greatest park, um, and Contreras is not the worst pitcher. So um, uh, if in fact that is accurate, and and they do come in the highest zone, I'm probably going to avoid that. Um, I will say, I mean, listen, this is not my this is hashtag analysis, but the other day, I, I don't want to say I cost anybody money, but the other day, uh, uh, Odorizzi, they were, uh, he was pitching against the, um, against the Mets and someone came into our discord and say, why don't I just stack the Mets? Odorizzi's terrible. I'm like, all right, it's not so easy. You know what I mean? And the Mets don't haven't really been knocking the cover off the ball. I wouldn't do it. And they ended up putting like a hundred runs off of on Odorizzi. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe Odorizzi is just terrible, whatever. But, um, I am, uh, Probably not going to get to Pittsburgh today. I just have too many other teams that I'm kind of interested in, I think. So for me, this whole game is probably going to be a, a, a pass, but but not because Atlanta's a bad play, but just because of ownership. Yeah, and, and, and I like, just for what it's worth, part of why I like Pittsburgh is because of all the stacks that sort of middle out to, you know, double-digit ownership. I don't see Pittsburgh as being one of them. So, and you've got cheap options. I, I even if you don't want to use them as a stack, I, I would say that Brian Reynolds, Marcano, and maybe Ben Gamble, you play those three guys and it's cheap and you've got a, uh, you're using your outfield spots, but if you could find a nice infield to stack, uh, I think that they definitely have some upside today. Uh, Mets and Yankees. Uh Honestly, I, I'll take all the over, like every Scherzer bet today, whether, you know, the K props, how long he pitches, fantasy point projections. I'll take the over on everything. Um, not, I, run, not, not runs? R R what do you mean? R R um, I, I can see him giving up a couple runs, but I don't know what it is. I don't, let's see what the run projection is. Three and a half for 3.3 .3 for the Yankees, depending on where you look. I mean, that's still I'm just like, teasing. I, I know what you, I know what you're getting at here. <laughs> yeah, I just I, I don't think that I necessarily need to play Scherzer at 11 three. Um, it is weird to see him with only a six and a half K prop against a team that has been really, really bad and striking out a lot uh, for a guy who basically is always over that number. So I I just I I, I like it. I, I think it's I think it's I think it's a totally fine, totally good play. I, I have no I'm not it's not like I'm afraid of the Yankees or anything like that. But I think there are enough other pitchers on the slate that I'm considering. Now, if you want, though, the, if we're talking about upside, obviously no one has the same upside that Scherzer does. So I, I, I'm i sort of going back and forth on this one. And and they did actually, you know, they, it's not like he's 10-2 or 10-3 like the most expensive pitcher usually is. He's 11-3. If that matters to you, I think that you can uh, – there's a bunch of other guys you can play that are, are you know, have a, have a similar expected result here uh, that are much cheaper. So – 
I'm okay with Scherzer, but as of in my first build, I didn't get to him. Um, that's pretty much all I have from this game. I, I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world to take some Mets bats against Herman, who can't strike anybody out. So this is the real battle of the Titans, this game. I mean, this is like you this is this is this is like not David Glide. This is this is like the two leaders in their field, just like just really just going after each other. So this requires a little bit of a, of a story. So last time the Yankees and the Mets came to town, remember, I don't remember. You yeah, don't remember really? I, I had a chance. I went to the game. Right. And I had I got tickets and I was originally going to bring bring Ashley. But but is my, is my daughter, but she, but she couldn't make it. And so I brought Matt instead. And I said, you know, next time. But listen, next time they come if, and she says, oh, well, can we go? Can we go? So so when this game came out, I'm, I said, you know what? I really don't have any excuse. So I actually have tickets for tonight's game. Oh. Um, I'm going with, with with her. I'm going with a couple of other people. Oh, awesome. And and starting four, three or four days ago, we got all the news that the game was going to be a washout. There's going to be thunderstorms all day, all day. And and my, and, you know, and Stacy's coming with me. So she said, "What happens if they if they cancel the game? Well, if they cancel it, then it's fine. But the worst is if it gets postponed because if they reschedule for the next day, then like no, everybody's got to rearrange their schedules." So this has been the talk of like the last three or four days about about mm-hmm. this game and the different different things or whatever it is. So we have an incredible battle here because on the one hand, we have the king of 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 what of baseball weather that being Kevin Roth, right? And then we on the other hand, the king of all the queen of all weather, and that would be Mrs. Sheets. <laughs> and Mrs. Sheets is telling me this game is raining out. And I have Roth telling me it's don't even worry about it. it's not gonna be a big problem. The weather's gonna disappear and they're gonna play. So we're 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 going, all right, on the assumption that we're playing. But there, there's all kinds of, of 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 different things in the ecosystem out there that 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 are fighting. Now I'd like to think that that as we get closer to the game, it's gonna be kind of it's gonna be kind of clear what's what's going on. And between you and me, I no one's allowed to hear me say this. I am kind of siding with Roth on this one. I, I think that that it is going to be okay, and the game's not. The game's going to be okay. But I'm reading through Twitter, and people are like, "Just cancel it already!" You know, it's not fair to the fans that go out there and all this stuff. It's freaking craziness. The Yankees' own Twitter is saying it's probably going to be rained out or whatever. But I, I think I'm I'm usually pretty with with the uh, the optimists on these things. So I I actually do think that they play. All right. So that that was the well, was, uh, and listen, there's not going to be anything you can act on because. They're going to figure it out pretty soon. You know what I mean? Like by five o'clock, I mean, they'll, they'll know that that weather's disappearing and they'll play. It's not going to, I don't think it's going to be a huge delay followed by a postponement. You know what I mean? Like, like right. I think the rain is probably going to be either gone or they know it's not going to be gone by like five o'clock or something. So, so I'm going to be at the game. <laughs> um, yeah. And then it was really funny because I also throw them out there. One of, one of Roth's other great comments was about, about this game was that even the Yankee Twitter people were saying that, 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 uh, but I wish it were rained out because otherwise Scherz is going to mow the freaking freaking team down. Like this, this is like this is like the worst possible time to face Scherzer. You know what I mean? The Yankees can't hit right now. Right. So right. Um, I, if this game plays and look, presuming it does play, this is a typical case where Scherzer is not going to show up as a good points per dollar play. Um, and just like you, it's whatever. Like he's showing up for me fifth, sixth, or whatever it is. I just, I just hope he doesn't go off at only like fifteen percent on or something like that somehow, um, because he could get forty. Absolutely. You know, uh, I mean, he's facing a totally a, a, like a dead team right now, and when dead teams start to press, I mean, like it's 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 a horror show. So he does have, I think, a really really big ceiling here. Now, with that said, I mean, he does show up as not the greatest point per dollar play, but. Um, you just have to put him in your player pool to a very with a very strong strong lean towards playing him. I think if you could make the other parts of your lineup work, and I haven't really actually, I did do some builds, and of course, the most build, the builds I come up with probably don't have him in it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you can make it work, and I think that that you probably should try to make it work. Um, as far as the hitting goes, um, I have I have thoughts of playing the Mets a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've played Herman the last couple of times, and I mean it's been fine. But but um, I don't know. I, I think the Mets could be. Uh, I mean they're they're not one of my top six or whatever. But 
and they got the people have to play them a little bit. So maybe, maybe, maybe I will avoid that. So, so for me, I am going to unfortunately have to play some Scherzer and uh, I am uh, probably not playing any of the hitters actually. Yeah. I, I, my first thoughts was to, to do the same, but I, I'm, I'm open to the idea of, of, of the Mets uh, maybe a little more. So not necessarily okay. Dak, but especially like Alonzo one off uh you eliminate this, you know, some of the strikeout risk. Armand has just had not been the same strikeout wise this uh, this season since coming back, and uh, or, or you know, or Vogelbach. The problem with the Mets is they have the crossover at first base because you kind of want to play both those guys sometimes. Wish they'd give one of them a different assignment sometime. Um, but yeah, I think the Mets are, are are one of those like sneaky stacks that I could that certainly wouldn't mind if you use, but it's definitely not a priority for me. All right, then we get Tampa and L.A um springs i think will be the chalk i yeah. like springs he's got a uh, you know really good k rate really good stuff uh the, their angels are terrible springs is cheap prefer him over Syndergaard and everybody in that price range he's going to be popular but as of right now i've got him as my sp well not necessarily price wise sp1 but he's the first guy who i i wanted to sort of lock in as my main pitcher today and I don't mind a Tampa stack, but again, they don't rate out well enough for me to where I'm going to do it. Probably. Um, this is going to be like like ob- people would say obviously, but uh, Springs I would feel a lot better, a lot more secure with if Otani were out, which he might be. Um, so I, I actually I wanna... disagree with that because Otani against lefties this season has been just horrendous. Um, okay, just want to throw that out there real quick. Um. Uh, well, horrendous might be a little bit of a stretch, but I believe he's 30. So he's got, he's hitting, what is he hitting now? Like right around 200 striking out a lot. So I, I'm not, I'm not afraid of Otani being in the lineup personally, but go ahead. Chiefs. Yeah. Well, no, I was going to say is that, is that if Otani is, is out, then, then he could sprint can basically just like walk trout whenever he, if you wanted to, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then just, and then just concentrate on the rest of the team. I just feel with Otani in there, it just makes it a little more difficult. Um, so, uh, yeah, he rates the best point per dollars play. He rates, you know, has some upside too. He, for lack of a better description, he works, he rates to be the best play like by a lot. Um, mm-hmm. so I will, I will say this, and this hasn't been the case for the 7,700 guys, but to you, I, you haven't, you, you didn't see this weekend, but I'll tell you, you know, you hear all these stories about how the hitting that has all this variance, but the pitching is more reliable. I don't know, man. You know, you got. Garrett Cole just gets crushed as chalk every day, every game. You have uh, you have Otani got just murdered <laughs> at eighty percent ownership or something like that against Detroit. And then you got um, what's his name? Luis Castillo gets run out of the building by Oakland. Uh, at again, I think he was literally eighty percent owned in the afternoon slate. Um, baseball's not easy, whether you're pitching or no, or no, absolutely. So I mean. Yeah, if, if if you if you play Springs and and Trout gets two home runs and you know Otani gets like whatever you're you're not allowed to complain, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but uh, he does rate to be the best play, um, and there aren't you know that many great pitching options. You know, it's not one of those things where you have you know two like four 10k guys, all of whom have you know 35 point upside. It's not like those days where you have McClanahan, Bieber, Cole, and you know whoever right. on the slate. And right. you don't need to play the seventies to camp. You, you don't want the, the the opportunity cost of missing those guys. Here, you really don't have that kind of opportunity cost. I mean, what would you that concern? Not to say he's bad, but are you that concerned on on missing Julio Arias's? You know what I mean? Like like performance. I mean, he can have a good performance, but yeah. the only guy I'm really worried about missing the performance on is Scherzer, and I play, play Scherzer in the Springs. You know, whatever. Right. So I think he is a very very strong play. The one thing I I don't want to say I disagree with you about about. Um, I will say that I, I do have a little bit of interest in the Tampa Tampa side of this as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you get a little correlation also, but yeah. So even though their 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 team total is not um, obviously it's a full run, uh, maybe a run and a half, no, a full run beneath some of these better teams. I am, you know, they're 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 somewhat cheap, so I'm getting to a little of that. So um, I do like Tampa a little bit as one of my six, and obviously Springs is at least for my money the best, you know, overall cash play and just overall pitching play. Tampa Bay may literally have an entirely different lineup with outside of two guys in like the fourth inning in this game. Just oh, you think so? Mind. Yeah. I mean, they, against lefties, especially if they don't start Brandon Lau, which they don't as often against lefties. Okay. Then they, all these guys, Siri, uh, Yu Chang, 
uh, Harold Ramirez, uh, probably not Paredes, but everybody else. I mean, not, maybe not Margot, possibly Margot, but Yandy Diaz and, and a Rosa Reina are the only guys I look at and I feel like I can actually play. And none of these guys have any sort of power numbers against lefties this season. Um, so I, I just, I just, I, we, we would be playing them just saying, well, the angels are bad. That would be my thing. And we're taking a horrible hitters park, but none of the numbers stand out to me as, as actually being a good matchup for them against any lefty, to be honest with you. Um, I would be more interested though, if Brandon Lowe was, Lowe was playing, even though he doesn't have great numbers against lefties, I would take, I like, I like the idea of at least having a guy who's got the home run power upside that I can use, but I, I can't quite get to them. I don't think. And then we get to, uh, to Minnesota and Texas, which I like Sonny Gray here. Um, I don't think that it's a must by any means. And there's a couple other pitchers that I'm going to talk about later that are right in that range that, that make a lot of sense. Sonny Gray has got really good stuff and, uh, you know, take out the, 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 the blip against the Dodgers. He did have a weird, weird bad outing against the White Sox, but he's, he sort of rounded back into form lately. He was great against KC the other day, struck out 10 of the 22 batters he faced. Um, and Texas has, has struggled offensively this season. So I, I don't mind Sonny Gray. And I, I like, I mean, I think that they're going to be owned as well, but I, I do like Minnesota, as I always say, specifically Miranda and Buxton, who just have terrific numbers against lefties. Um, Miranda now up to eight home runs and 100 at-bats this year against lefties. Uh, Buxton, 10 home runs, 112 at-bats. There's a lot of power here, um, especially in those two guys' bats. And then you could fill it out with guys like Arias, uh, Correa, uh, probably Sanchez would be my next one. Um, but I think they're all, they're all, this is a very, vi very viable stack. And maybe, maybe isn't getting as much ownership as I thought it was going to. Um Cause I'm looking at it now and I was going to guess a little bit higher, but if they're going to be lower owned by any, like in any way, I don't think it's going to happen, but uh, I do like Minnesota quite a bit today. And I also think that like, if you're playing like a, the, you know, the lottery and you're playing a bunch of lineups, throw one Cole Reagan's in there just in case. Um, I, I don't love it or anything like that. I just think that 5,700 way to get different on a, on a sort of a weird slate where we don't really know about the pitching. I, 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 as much as I like Minnesota, I think that, you know, taking a weird long shot on him in the lottery might make some sense, but my first thought is just to play Minnesota and I definitely will have some gray. Yeah. I think Sonny gray is one of the, uh, you know, I have, I have a whole bunch of SP twos. This is, this is what I, is something I alluded to earlier. Like I'd rather play Sonny gray than, than, than Noah Syndergaard. Right. Um, I, yeah. I just would. Yeah. Um, yeah. I find, I find, I find the 700 for him. Um, uh, and I would totally pair Sonny Gray with, with, with Springs, uh, and not play Scherzer. That, that, that would certainly make sense. Uh, he's got a, you know, he's got a pretty good matchup and he's projects pretty well. And, and he had, he had a pretty, um, I think he had a really great performance. Was, was it his last one or was it one? Yeah, it was, no, it was last one. It was last yeah, one. Yeah. Struck out 10 out of 20. Again, well, against the minor league team, but I mean, yeah. Still. Um, but, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I do, I do have his very reasonable SP two on in the context of this slate. I think he's, you can actually make the case that he's a legitimate pivot off of Springs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you wanted, if you didn't want to play Springs. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do like that. And, and part and parcel with that is Minnesota showing up as a really, as a decent stack as well. So, so for me, I would play Sunny Gray alongside with Minnesota. And mm -hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I did not quite get to the Reagans. I just, you know, uh, Minnesota with the big team total and whatever. They, they've they been struggling recently, Minnesota, um, to get to come through um, when people have been playing them. Um, but I, I, I'm i not getting the Reagans, but I would definitely play Minnesota and definitely play Sunday. Yeah, they haven't had that big out. That's why I usually, I usually mini stack. I usually just play Miranda and, and Buxton against the lefties. But I, I don't, I still think that they have enough, uh, there's enough talent there and, Gary Sanchez, we know that he's, you know, very likely going to strike out three or four times, but historically has hit lefties well for power, even though he hasn't much this season. Um, all right. Uh, Jordan Montgomery and Smiley in uh, the St. Louis Chicago game. I, 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 I'm not going to play uh, Montgomery, I don't believe, but I actually don't think it's the worst idea in the world. Um, I think there's, you know, it's, it's the Cubs. Uh, he's, you know, he's been flashing some, some, he had a couple good strikeout games in a row against Colorado and Milwaukee. Um, so I, I, I'm not, I'm not opposed to, uh, to Montgomery 
And the super weird long shot play would be uh, Drew Smiley just has enough stuff to where I, I mean, it's really weird to suggest a lefty against St. Louis in this slate. I'm not going to, this would not be a priority. This would go under the Cole Reagans thing and you play the, the, the lottery thing and play those two guys. You can play whatever stack you want and not worry about anything. But uh, I do think Smiley is at least viable. And I think Montgomery is viable, but I'm probably just enough. So to keep me off of the hitting in this game, it's not, not my favorite, uh, not my favorite matchup for the bats. There's a little bit of wind blowing in. It's kind of cool in Chicago today at 72 for the summer. It's usually pretty much warmer. So I, I'm I'm uh, I'm a little bit off the bats in this game. Although I wouldn't I wouldn't fault you for stacking St. Louis. That's what I was going to ask you if there was any information on the weather in this game. Um, yeah. Because I actually did get St. Louis as kind of one of the top stacks, uh, all else being equal. Um, but in, in Chicago, it's not all. I mean. <laughs> All else is never equal. You know, it's, you're either, you're either, you're, it's either helping you or it's hurting. It's almost like never a neutral matchup. It's even. Um, and, and the smiley thing is, little, is kind of interesting, you know, because, because if, in fact, if in fact St. Louis ends up people playing them, then smiley could be a pretty, pretty strong pivot. Um, uh, both pivot from a price perspective off of Springer and also, um, for for leverage against St. Louis, um, I, I had I had St. Louis being a little more popular because of that. I, I was always under the impression that people pl- always went up, went, you know, try to attack Smiley. I was also under the impression that you know St. Louis against lefties is always kind of really good. So I I thought that St. Louis is going to be pretty chalky, um, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how it plays out. Mm-hmm. And Montgomery's interesting. This keeper kind of revitalized his career. <laughs> Going to St. Louis, I don't know. Um, you give him ten mile an hour wins uh, going in. Maybe, maybe he's a pretty decent play. I didn't even. Didn't, I mean, he's not showing up for me as that great a play, but he's not showing up as a terrible play. Um, so yeah, maybe. Let me, let me that feels it. about right for him. Like not a great play, not a terrible. What, play. what is what has he yeah. actually done since he? He's. Um, I mean, he's had he's had a couple of nice games in a row. But what's he doing? This? He's got one hundred eight pitches. Yeah. I mean, the Yankees do a lot with what the Dodgers do. They without other than like you know the ace of the Coles and everything, they'll 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 pull those starting pitcher pretty quickly. Which is but this is amazing. Like he's got this. This is I guess maybe the curse of the Yankees this year. His two starts since he left the Yankees are his two ceiling performances of the season. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Right, twenty nine and twenty six. Yeah, yeah, I don't <laughs> think he's gotten that the whole season. Look at this. Yep, I think Not you're a right. Single yeah. performance. Who uh, was better than either of these two since he left the Yankees? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, um, yeah. I don't know. I, maybe I'll maybe I'll take a shot. That's uh that's pretty interesting actually. Maybe this whole game play smiley, hope for a little more win. Have Smiley and uh, Smiley uh, Montgomery paired. Fade Springs. <laughs> fade Fade Scherzer. Woo! I don't know. We'll see. Yep. I I I, I get it. Um. <laughs> the problem I have with it is I like the guy in the next game a little bit better. You um, mean this this particular game? The game coming up. Yeah, wait. I'm not looking at your screen right well, now. Well, I have Miami Oakland next. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Let's hear it. Uh, Cabrera would be maybe my my favorite guy in that range. The price is maybe look it looks a little shocking to people. This guy's got terrific stuff. Um, assuming that he is in fact pitching because I had originally I had Pablo Lopez, who's actually in my first. Oh, goal. that's who I had pitching. That's that's why I'm all screwed up here. OK, yeah. So assuming that it is Cabrera, I am more than fine taking a chance on a young arm like this against uh, Miami. I'm sorry, against Oakland. And uh, to be completely honest, as much as he may, may not give us a whole lot to feel excited about. You have a really cheap Adam Euler and just they're playing Miami. That should be a good enough reason to at least consider someone. Um, but I do think Cabrera is a, is a really solid option. And I think that the price, you, you know, again, Cabrera is going to be lower owned than, than the other guys I like in the eight K's like the, he'll, he should be right around where Montgomery is and he'll be lower owned for sure. than uh, then uh, uh, why can't I think of his name? Sonny gray. So I, I am okay with uh with Cabrera, yeah, I, I, I'm 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 good with Cabrera here. He's he's the guy I'm sort of leaning a little bit towards as my uh, in my main lineup uh, w- along with uh, Springs. Wow, that's interesting. Um, yeah, you know, it's so funny because I, I wonder how it's going to play out because I currently have um, Pablo Lopez projected, so that was old. So now Cabrera is going to be pitching. I wonder if if Cabrera is going to end up with a higher projection or lower projection than Pablo Lopez would have in the same spot. 
Um, I think it'll be, I think it'll be lower, but I, I really, I, I would have played both of them. <laughs> I like both of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because I had him as I had Pablo Lopez as one of the you know one of those other SP twos in that range. Um, um, now, now I see why Scherzer might not be that high owned because I mean you could play two eight K guys that are in good spots, you know, and, and, it's, and then then do whatever you want hitting wise. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, uh, as far as as far as the hitting side, this I actually have Miami as kind of a kind of a cheapo stack. If you needed it, but I'm more I'm looking at the slate. I, maybe you don't need any. Maybe you don't need cheapo stats. Um, I think especially if you, did, you have all these seventy eight hundreds. Yeah, I think if you wanted to look for cheap bats, it's it's the game we skipped. I sort of skipped over. I probably should have mentioned it, but Cincinnati I think is actually a, a standout for for value. Um, so I, I would I would say that Cincinnati would be your your value um, value stack if you wanted to go that against Syndergaard. You mean? I don't think I would. Yeah, I don't think I would go. I don't think I would necessarily fully stack him, but. Yeah, I mean, th- th- just everybody's so cheap. And then, you you know, you've got still Moustakas at 2K, Senzel at 2K, Fraley at 2,500, Friedel at 2,200. It's pretty easy to do a stack there. And, and even if they score like five runs or something like that, those guys, and then and then you get the, the big bats in your, the rest of your stack. Maybe you play the Dodgers or something like that. I think that's very reasonable. Um, but yeah, these guys, there are, there are some cheap options in this game. And and I think that uh, the, the, the main one would be probably J.J. Blade at 2k um would be my favorite if i had to pick one of them i have the dodgers as kind of like a fifth slash sixth stat uh i never seem to get eric lauer right um actually i shouldn't even say that i i just always seem to play against lauer and i never seem to i'm happy to be happy about it Mm -hmm. um and i always like avoid him just when he puts up a ceiling performance as well. I'm obviously I'm not going to play Lauer, right? But but mm-hmm. I'm I'm a little nervous playing the Dodgers in this spot. So um, I'll probably get to them just out of you know just because. But but uh, I'm not too thrilled about that spot. Um, maybe maybe I uh, I dismissed the Arias play a little bit too much here. You know when I said oh well, you really need to get to Arias. You know what I mean when I when I was mocking that play earlier i think he's like maybe 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 you do need to get to a rise you know what i mean like look milwaukee's got a team total under three um if 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 your choices are play are are doing these double spend downs like like springs springs x or if you don't want to do that you play for sure so maybe arias gets lost i don't know i think he's gonna be popular well i don't see it that way because i right now have but arias is really popular yeah, but I think in the end, don't you think people are going to rather play Scherzer than Arias? Maybe, but even still, I think you're talking about probably t- probably thirty percent ownership. I think so. Okay. Yeah, I, I just don't yeah. think he'll be overlooked. I mean, this is okay. not. There's nothing about Arias that should scare. It's just a thing people do with Dodger pitchers. They just assume that none of these guys pitch at all, and they just are all awesome. The only thing about Arias that he, that he just doesn't throw a hundred pitches. Um, right. But he's incredibly efficient. He doesn't walk people. He oh. has a decent enough K rate, um, not like outstanding, but but still very good. And he's been really good, including in some tough matchups in Colorado lately. He's he's been really good at the exception of one outing, and um, including against these this Milwaukee team, uh, he was he was solid last time. Not the maybe not the most upside guy for a 10K guy, but I, I do think he's he's very very viable. Um, and I think that most most of the other people I've looked at this morning have him ranked as the number one pitcher on the slate. Um, okay. but if that's, if, if, if he does end up more owned than Scherzer, that's probably just wrong for tournaments. Um, Scherzer just does have, does have the, the, the ceiling is just so much higher, um, than anybody's really, but like Arias has a higher K prop than, than Scherzer does today, which is kind of interesting. Um, and Scherzer's, Scherzer's throwing 130 pitches today at this game play. Like, <laughs> he's in the, I, I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, like, he's... <laughs> different than you though. I, I do actually really like the Dodgers today. Oh, um, okay. I think that, look, they've had a hundred and whatever plate appearances against uh, 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 Lauer, uh, 35 walks and 130-ish plate appearances, uh, 10 home runs and 130 plate appearances. That looks like a recipe for disaster, potentially. And if you want to talk about a stack that could explode, it would be the Dodgers for me. And I really do like them, especially because they just faced Lauer. He was good against them. They did hit a couple home runs off of him. But even if you're not stacking the Dodgers, uh, they're really expensive. But uh, Trey Turner and Mookie Betts, I'm just going to keep 
saying those guys' names. And I think <laughs> there, there's a there's a lot of upside there um, for the Dodgers stack today. And curious where the ownership will be because he did just sort of shut him down, which tends to have people tend to have short memories here. And I think that they're going to be on the fairly fairly lower side of of, of ownership. So uh, you can include Justin Turner, who's looked a little bit better at the plate. Uh, Chris Taylor. I, I think this is a re- very reasonable stack here. So I like the Dodgers actually quite a bit. And with that, I mean, you know, going I, again, I can't play Pablo Lopez. So I'm going to have to change my main lineup here because I do have Minnesota as my top stack today. But like you said, they've they've really haven't given us a whole lot of things to feel good about when we've had them as this top stack before. Um, so I also don't think you're okay not stacking, but I think Minnesota, the Dodgers are and Pittsburgh are my favorite factoring in ownership and everything else. Um, as far as my stats go, I guess if I had to do it now, I would say probably man, St. St. Louis, maybe, I don't know. St. Louis, I have to watch the win though. T- Tampa. How about the mess? Okay. I think the Mets are a really interesting contrarian stack. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, I, well, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm trying to factor in here. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I have no problem with that. So I would say overpay for the Mets. Pay like for, like, if, if what's his name is Brandon Nimmo is still like 5,100 or something like that. You're like, do like, like, pay for that and, and, and double pay down for pitching. Um, mm-hmm. And that's something, you know, that's something not, 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 that many people do, but you play the Mets without Scherzer. Um, right. Yeah. So you play the Mets with two spend downs. Um, that, that could be something. So that, that I'm, you know, that's what I'm going to give. I'm going to give out the, meanwhile, I'm going to the Yankee game. We root for the Yankees. So I'm talking about the, talking about Scherzer Mets. Just <laughs> jam them in there. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I like the Mets. I like St. Louis, but I got to watch the win there. As far as pitching goes, um, I guess – I guess Springs is safe enough. Um, but I do think that Sonny Gray could outscore him. Uh, we should. He's 800 more, right? I, I do think that Sonny Gray could outscore him on a good day. I think that um, I kind of like what you said about Cabrera. Um, mm-hmm. I think he can outscore Springs. Uh, I think that obviously Scherzer and Arias can outscore Springs, right? Um, so if you want the ultimate – the, not the ultimate pivot. So here, here's going to be, I'm going to go back to the guy I just mentioned. So I mentioned St. Louis. I'll, I'll you know, I'll go for the resurgence of, of Jordan Montgomery. That, that could be my, that could be my leverage play. Today. So it'll be Jordan Montgomery with the Mets. That'll be, my, that'll be my, hey, you'll, what, be, what do you call it? The get, weird, the get weird play, whatever. So that's going to yeah. be my, that's going to be my, uh, my idea. Yeah. I didn't make sense. That makes and if sense. you really want to lose, you can compare, you could pair that guy with, um, with you could stack that game. You could uh, with Smiley. You could do a a, a a Smiley Montgomery pairing, fade everybody, with them, and then play the Mets, and then then then, then watch some chalk game that you should have had <laughs> that, that, that wins the slate. But though, that, but you can get you can get very contrarian on the slate and and uh, feel just bad enough about it that it's probably worth doing. Yeah, I, uh, that is a funny way to put it, but I, yeah, I totally hear you. Um, <laughs> I, my pitchers are are Springs, Cabrera. Mm-hmm. Um, again, assuming that Cabrera does in fact start, it's, or sometimes these right. things change, especially for Miami. They for some, Miami changes pitchers like midday, like more often than any team I've ever seen in my life. They did it yesterday. Um, uh, and then and then the Scherzer Arias thing, like I do think that's it's it's better to to play guys like Scherzer in, in these spots, and they're not the same price though. There's there's there is a price gap between the two of them. But I, and I, and I think that if you're going to, if you're going to, if you, if you wanted to play like a Scherzer or Arias together and try and get just the two best pitchers, uh, I think you could, you could get away with it with a, maybe a Cincinnati and a Pittsburgh combo stack or something like that, that are, you can get really, really cheap. Um, the only thing, by the way, I would say about the, about playing the Mets is kind of goes along with what you've talked about these Dodgers San Francisco games. I mean, you're, you're going to, you're, you're going to get, you're going to get the both teams best shots, you know? So I think if Herman's struggling even a little bit, they're going str- going to go straight to the bullpen. I mean, they they need they need they need wins here, like you know they need to stem this stem this downswing. You know what I mean? And yet there's still eight games out of <laughs> eight games in first place. You know what I mean? But yeah. um, but they 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 need they need to get they need to get some wins, and especially against the Mets. Um, so I don't know if stacking stacking the Mets is that great idea. I'll, I'll go back to what I was just saying that if, that if Herman is struggling even the slightest bit. 
they're just going to bring bring all the best whatever they got <laughs> right 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 uh, out of the bullpen to stem the tide so maybe that's not the greatest idea but yeah um, and the Mets also needing to win but at the same time that just probably means more sure they, they don't care they can win three two that's fine by them yeah. Right. yeah 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 exactly all right well good luck to everybody I'll be live at six eastern um I will not be there sheets and sheets will not be there I said we'll be at the the Yan- on his way to the Yankee game I hope and, so uh, yep Hopefully, yeah. Um, and then we'll keep an eye on weather. And I'll, I'll talk to you guys about that at 6 Eastern. So good luck, everybody. Have a good day, Sheets. Enjoy the game. Yep. And uh, let's make some money tonight, guys. All right. Good luck.